Hello and welcome back to Breastfeeding Beginnings at the Nook Bar. I'm Lori Franklin, lactation consultant and registered nurse. Thank you for taking the time again to watch my videos and to learn a little bit more about breastfeeding. I'm here to help you, support you, and give you that confidence that you need in order to fulfill your breastfeeding goals, okay? So today's topic, we're gonna to talk a little bit about how do I know my baby's getting enough? That is a huge question, comes up all the time in every visit because you can't see what comes out of that breast, right? But you can feel, and you'll learn that over time, okay? So if that baby's cheek were clear and your boob were clear, it'd be a lot easier to see what's going in there, but you have to do feeling, touching, and you also have to watch your baby's signs and his body language, and that will tell you if the baby's getting enough, okay? So before they start eating and want to eat, they show you signs of hunger, okay? And those signs are quite subtle early on, so you have to make sure that you're listening, watching the baby so that you can see these things and you'll get used to them. So they tend to we we'll hear that first, little smacking of the lips. And then they tend to take out, stick out the tongue and root around, hands at the mouth, and they're trying to put anything and even a blanket if it's there, whatever's touching the face, they'll turn all kinds of ways to try to get on there. When you start noticing that, that's when you get your baby. You don't wait until they cry because crying is a late sign of hunger. Okay, late sign. It's harder to feed a baby when they're all worked up. So we want to try and get them before that happens. Okay, so first thing, once your milk comes in about three to five days after the baby is born, uh, it's a little bit easier and you actually feel more confident because you have these full of breasts and you have a baby that drinks that you can hear swallows and the breast feels softer afterwards. Okay, so once the baby is ready to eat and you're all positioned, Put the baby on again, make sure you put the nipple across from the baby's nose, baby's mouth is open very wide, and you compress the breast like a burger compared uh, when uh, compared to the angle that the baby's mouth is coming at it. So look at the baby's mouth, compress the breast, nose when he opens, put them on pr pretty quickly. Okay, so feel the breast too before you feed. You should take a mental note of how heavy where the little lumps are on there so you have something to compare to after the feed, okay? So once the baby gets on and starts feeding, they do these short, fast sucks called non-nutritive sucks. It gets the milk to flow down or flow out called let down. Non-nutritive sucking can go on for up to two minutes on babies. Now the older babies get, the better and faster they can get let down. A newborn is probably gonna take close to a minute or two for that to actually happen. A baby that's four or five months old, you can they can get it done in about 15 seconds, okay? Because they know what they're doing by that point. So when they get on and they start doing this little fast suck and they and then they pause you know this thing and then they pause a little bit and then they start sucking and drinking you see wider deeper sucks when they get on there you want to watch watch listen and feel and watch their hands because their hands are usually up here at the face or right on your breast and they're in fists as they get fuller their hands tend to open more they get weaker, you know, they get weak and then their arms start to fall down some. Now, I don't want you to be tricked by a baby that looks like this with the arms down and when the eyes are shut. Eyes shut doesn't mean that the baby is asleep as well, okay? But if you see wrinkled forehead, they still, they're still not done. They're just resting a little bit. But you squeeze that breast till that baby keeps sucking until you notice that they're not sucking as well. When they, some babies, when they're full, they will either just come off the breast when they're done. Not all of them do the same thing. That some of them will, will hold on to the breast for dear life. You got to get a crowbar to get them off, okay? And then you got the ones that will slide back to the nipple. Because they learn if they just slide back just a couple millimeters there on the nipple, it pinches, but they're not getting any food. And they can use you like a pacifier. You, you are to stop that behavior immediately so it doesn't continue, okay? Once the baby comes off, I'm going to tell you to burp your baby. Now, don't sit there and Google eye, oh, mommy loves you, you're so cute, and all that kind of stuff. We know all that, right? But what you want to do is actually burp them. Now, of course, people tend to do the burp up here, but I'm gonna tell you something a little bit differently because this is something I have noticed in practice to get the baby to go back onto the breast a second time and to feed, okay? So instead of doing that, I want you to sit the baby in front of you on the lap, hold up around the jaw, 
you want to take that passy out. We're not going to use passies, okay? In here, unless it's a medical necessity, okay? For the first month, no pacifiers, no artificial nipples, if you can help it. And then lean the baby forward, and you're going to burp this way. So your palm is up under the jaw. I'm sorry, your fingers are up under the jaw. The baby's chin is like resting right here on this little part of your finger. And your palm is on the chest. So that'll help support the baby when they're sitting in front of you. And you're going to burp. This way you can see their body language to let you know if they're actually full or if they're still a little hungry. Because if they're still a little hungry, the hands will still stay up and the eyes tend to open because this way is a little bit more uncomfortable for them to, to sleep. You put them up on the chest, they snuggle up and then you lay them down and 10 minutes later, they're screaming again for some more food. And then you think, I must not have enough because they, they only slept for 10 minutes. And the truth is they just didn't finish that feed, okay? So you wanna burp. Once you hear the burp, if the breast that the baby is still on was on first, okay? Baby, if that breast still feels like it's milk in it, you are to put them back on the same side. Don't go to the other side yet because you wanna make sure the baby gets as much as he can from one before offering the other side at a feeding, okay? Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and feed again. Now, once your baby, and the baby may not feed as long the second time going on, okay? They might not even burp at that feed or they might burp before they come off the breast. Every baby's different, you know? So just spend a couple of minutes burping, okay? Then once the baby um, gets back on the breast, feeds again, you wanna do the same thing. Make sure that you're doing some, you know, do some breast compressions too. I didn't say that before, but squeezing the breast, when you notice the baby is pausing for too long, you wanna squeeze the breast, massage, find those little lumpy areas and squeeze to help the milk go in a little bit more and have the baby take more. Now, once the baby is full, then you can put them up and you can tell. The arms will be limp, you can lift them up and they'll just fall down like those WWF wrestlers, right? That's when they're drunk. And they usually will give you that little half smile. Now, I haven't seen that in any textbook, but I've seen it in practice many times. You'll just see, you know, they're just so happy because they're nice and drunk. Now, question or comment, I should say. The reason I told you not to feed a little on each breast is because breast milk, once it comes in, not colostrum, but breast milk is actually thinner at the beginning of the feeding and the more the baby takes out of the breast during that feeding session, it gets more and more fat into it, which means it's a gradual process. You know, there's four milk and high milk. People want to ask me, well, when does high milk come in? High milk comes in at the second suck. That's when it comes in because it's a gradual thing. So if you're really full, which you do usually overproduce the first week and you feed a little here and a little there, you're going to get the baby thin stuff all the time. So here's a way. Think about when you go to a sit down restaurant, they give you something to drink first. So you get your lemonade or your tea. Then you get your salad, you get your steak and potato and your hot fudge sundae. Okay. When you do that and you eat, Think about when the baby's on the breast. When they come off the breast the first time and you do that burp, that is um, that was lemonade, salad, couple bites of steak. You want to put them back on. They're still rooting. Even if they look sleepy, off from the breast the second time, okay? Because when they go on there that second time, they're going back for some more steak and ice cream. Steak and ice cream keeps you sleep, okay? And it makes, helps you gain weight better. A breast that's drained out really well makes more milk. Now, if the baby um, doesn't take anything from the other side, you can pump a little bit if you're uncomfortable or hand express. And then next full feed, go to the other side first. As the baby gets bigger, you might need to use both breasts at each feeding and that's fine. So signs, you know, another way of telling if your baby's getting enough, um, of course, I said they got the wrestler arm, right? They're drunk. Um, they sleep for at least one good hour after they feed. These are newborns. They don't sleep for three and four hours all the time. They eat from every average about every one to three hours around the clock okay um, also they're peeing and pooping enough first day of life they have like black poop within the third day it's about green and then by day five it should be yellow and seedy and the amount of poop that they have um and diapers it should be at least, on day one at least one pee one poop day two is at least two peas two poops day three three and three goes up like that to day five and then at day six, at least six wets and three to four poops a day. Babies also lose weight the first couple of days. We don't like them to go over 10% of their birth weight in loss, um, but um, we watch that. And then they gain. So they gain about an ounce a day for the first four months of their life and, um, and should be back up at birth weight by the time they are two weeks old, okay? So 
Hopefully these tips will help you. Again, click like, subscribe, and comment, and share. And I will see you next week at the Milk Bar.